Let me begin by saying it was really important for me to be here this morning uh, because of the subject of our discussions today. I'm going to speak a little bit about the importance of the discussion, but I also want to talk a little bit about the significance of advocacy in the state legislature and at the federal level for the issue that brings everybody together here. Let me frame the issue, though, in a much more personal way. Probably, uh, certainly for the patients who are here, but I bet you for most everybody in this room, you've been touched by COPD in ways that are life-changing and not necessarily in a good way. You know, many of us, I can tell my own family, my daughter, who is 19, has asthma. I remember being in Sacramento when I served in the legislature and getting a phone call from her coaches because my daughter, who's now in college, was an exceptional fast-paced softball pitcher here uh, at uh, North Highland High School. She was playing in a game, and she had to race off the pitcher's mound because she couldn't breathe. And, you know, she had, uh, fortunately, an inhaler in her gym bag in the dugout. But so many of our kids don't have health insurance, don't have an inhaler. What do they do? Right? So much of today is focused on thinking about that next generation as well as current generations who are living with COPD. Parenthetically, by the way, is as far as kids go, one of my causes in Sacramento has been quality, affordable health care for everyone. And as a result, in the wake of federal health care reform, I wrote the legislation in California that says that sick children with pre-existing conditions have a right to have health insurance here in California. And parenthetically, when I was in the process of writing that legislation, health insurers said, well, maybe we want to circumvent that law altogether by not just not insuring any, any individual children in California. And uh, the LA Times reported that they came back. Uh, because in part of a provision I'm going to the law that says if you do that, you can't insure any adults in California for five years. So it's really important for us not to be thinking about these issues merely as academic issues. It's important for us to be thinking about these issues as a way to activate all of us. Because so many policies that we engage in, that we grapple with at the state, federal, and local levels implicate COPD. In some in ways, it may seem less apparent until you start to examine them a little bit. Obviously, how we deal with the health care exchange, how we deal with Medi-Cal, what, what provisions in new laws are going to assure that seniors, as well as children, have access to basic medication and health regimens that will assure that if they're living with COPD is treated properly. But there's much more than that. Land use policies implicate COPD. Transportation policies implicate COPD. How we deal with California's Environmental Quality Act implicates COPD. And with that, so I want to inspire you to think quite broadly about the implications of what brings you here today. There'll be discussions about health provision and very serious discussions about the health aspects of this issue, about medicine. I get it. But before you leave, I hope everybody here has in mind what they're individually going to commit to do to take those health-based concerns to the halls of the Capitol in Sacramento and in Washington. And let me tell you about what's at stake. So for example, in LA, I was the author of legislation that created Measure R, which is this $40 billion infusion of money into LA County to transform our transportation system and in particular to emphasize public transit. And I wrote the law that enabled Measure J to get on the ballot just last week. Only in California can a measure that got 65% of the vote fail, right? Because it had, had two thirds, about a point and a half short uh, of winning. If we had to continue that effort, Measure J would have accelerated those $40 billion of improvements. We could build those projects much sooner. Why do we care in this room? There's a reason why the AQMD is involved in sponsoring this event. We care because we have to get people out of their cars. We have to curtail further diesel exhaust because fine particulate matter has everything to do with COPD. Now, I, I'm not you know, speaking right here just for a moment, so I just want to speak just for one more second about the other policies I alluded to. Because especially in an economic recession, California's environmental laws are on the chopping block. At every level of government in California, on the chopping block. And you need to say that that's not right. We can have economic development and environmental quality at the same time. 
that if you think for a moment this is an abstraction, I urge you to talk to any advocate in Sacramento about the new legislative session. One of the key issues, and I'm turning out of office in two weeks, so I won't be there. One of the key issues is how to try to change, some might say, gut California's Environmental Quality Act. You have to be part of that discussion. So for today, this is kind of a call to action from me. I'm at a strange place in my career as a member of the assembly because for all the work I've been doing in the, in the legislature, in my class, we are allowed to serve three two-year terms, and then we have to leave. And as I mentioned, the third of those terms for me expires in two weeks. So I need others to carry on many of the causes that we've been working on together for so long. In that spirit, I do have a parting gift. I have a resolution on behalf of the Assembly of the State of California in recognition of all the work and the leadership of Green LA. And I want Neil to come up here and accept this. Oh, well, actually, please, Enrique. Okay, Enrique, come with us. <laughs> on behalf of all of us in California, with a lot of gratitude, congratulations.